going to try to give myself as much room as I can here. Um, so one, one way to decompose uh, our picture of our free group is we could call this, the, the element E they call here is our one. So we could say this is, this is the element one uh, plus, or you're learning a little bit about set three with the union mm -hmm. of what they're calling uh, all the words that start with X. So they call that S, S of A. So this is all the words that begin with A. a. Okay. So the words starting with A, or in our case X. Yep. I'll just say I'll just adopt their notation. You know okay. what I mean, right? Words starting with A. Okay. What's another component? That gives me this component here. So I've got one words that start with A. What's another component? Um, words that start with A-A, -A. Yeah, that way. Ah, well, A-A -A is a word that does start with A. Oh. So that's already, so I've got this whole component here because to get to this part of the graph, I've got to start with A. So then you could, would to start with A inverse. Okay. That way, backward. Start A inverse, okay. So how much of the graph would you say I have now? Probably a half. Okay. And then the, you can do the two that start with B and then B inverse. Start with B. Start with B inverse. So it looks like there's five parts of this graph. There's there's the identity element that's a single point. Yep. And then the words that start with A, the words that start with B inverse, the words that start with A inverse, and the words that start with B. And there's no overlap because you can't ever get over to this part of the graph if you start here. That's right. If you start with A, you can never touch the part of the graph that starts with B. Um, but I'm going to show you now a very interesting surprise. Mm. Mm -hmm. What if I go to um, this part here? So I'm going to go to the starts with A inverse. starts with A inverse. I'm going to go to that part of the graph and I'm going to multiply everything in this part of the graph by A. Alright. Okay, so I'm going to take this whole piece of the graph and I'm going to multiply it by A. So what do you think happens now? Well, I think you're going to get the same part, but plus this point. Okay. Because the word A inverse is going to simplify to the identity. Okay, so A inverse is definitely in the starts with A inverse mm -hmm. set. Yeah. So when I multiply that by A, I get the you identity. Get identity. Okay. And then you can imagine just going along this line here. From A inverse, you go to A inverse, A inverse squared, A inverse cubed, A inverse to the fourth, just down this line. Mm -hmm. Those are all just going to shift back one. Okay. All right. And then you can imagine going down like this, these lines, these, these okay. are all going to shift back one as the A inverse goes away. Alright, so what is this point here, for example? Let's look at that specific point. What so is that? That's A inverse B. Okay, so if I have A inverse B, and I multiply by A, what do I get? You get A inverse, so... If you multiply by A, inverse or A? Uh, if I multiply by A. So, so I start with this thing A inverse B and I multiply by A. So you're going this way, going to this point here. Ah, okay. So I'm multiplying by A at the beginning. I'm not multiplying by A at the oh. end. I'm multiplying by A at the beginning. So that's going to go to here, actually. Okay, why? Because the, these go away and you just get B. Alright. So that means that this line here going to go to this line here. Okay. And likewise, this line here would go to this line here. Okay. Where do you think this whole branch is going to go? Probably okay. to this branch. All right. And then this branch is going to go to that branch. You, you don't get over here. Oh. Like. Oh, interesting. Well, now, before we address that, can you tell me? Do you understand why this branch, do you understand why this branch ends up up here? 
because the the A inverse and the A cancel, so you're just left with it has B in it here from here, and then you're gonna just start with B and then Right. So I get rid of the, the first A inverse essentially. Yeah. And now now I have all the words that start with B. But that's this branch here. Yeah. And then this branch is gonna stay to here. Uh -huh. That branch is going to there. Okay, very good. Now why can I never get anything that starts if I if I have a word that starts with A inverse and then it goes on and I multiply by A, why can I never end up with a word that starts with A? Because because if you had, you have to, they don't have to start A inverse A, uh -huh. but that simplifies. That goes away. Okay. So one surprising thing about this, this graph, remember I said we could divide this up into five pieces. One plus starts with A, starts with A inverse, starts with B, starts with B inverse. Yep. But I can also divide it up now, not into five pieces, but into two pieces. Starts with A, and then A times starts with A inverse. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole graph. Wow. Right? Yeah. But I haven't even used these parts. Right? So I could now do starts with B plus B starts with B inverse. What do you think I get here? You get... So the starts with B is just this part, so it's just B, B times B inverse is going to be these other three branches. Okay. Hmm. So now I've taken my graph, and I've chopped it up into two separate and distinct pieces, mm -hmm. and made two exact copies of the same thing. Hmm. Huh. Right? Because yeah. I first started with A and A inverse. Technically, technically, this we have to deal with the because I never included this point, but yeah. that's fine. We'll we'll let's just skip that subtle point for a second. Um, but a and a inverse don't overlap, and a times a inverse gets me the whole graph plus a. Mm -hmm. Similarly, b plus b times b inverse gets me the whole graph. Hmm. Two copies. So I I chopped my graph into, into actually four pieces and created two copies of the exact same original graph. Hmm. Does that seem strange? Yep. Yeah. Can you see why this is the beginning of the Banach Tarski? Well, that's yeah. what I the paradox kind of like... is all about. You can just mm -hmm. do this with spheres. Yeah, and this is this is really the, the, the main idea in the proof. You do this with spheres and now Instead of having a rotation by ninety degrees, yeah, you just you just do the same thing. Imagine this is a, not a cube but a sphere. You do a rotation by something that never repeats to itself by say like square root of two degrees, yeah. or square root of pi degrees, or pi degrees, or e degrees, or something like that. Yeah, something that's irrational, so that it will never actually return to where it started. Similarly, you make the other rotation irrational, yeah. and and then you start creating. Uh, you start following points around on the sphere under these moves, and uh, you end up being able to dissect the sphere into originally, originally five parts, and then you divide it into two pieces that make the same thing. Hmm. So there's Bonacharsky for you. What do you think? It's pretty crazy. Interesting. It is pretty crazy. Um, it's a neat idea. It's a neat idea. It brings in a lot of very advanced math. Yeah. Um, and, but the free groups are, are uh, a real thing that people study in a, in a subject called group theory. Hmm. And then the bonach you know, comes up in set theory, and you're beginning to learn about set theory now. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You guys like this? Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, great work. Good work this morning, guys.